What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Happy Monday out there. So on Friday on Overtime, I talked about no longer grading with SGC. Um, the situation at hand, their poor customer service that has gone on in that company. And I'm just done. Today's video, I'm going to go over the whole thing with you guys. And hopefully it all makes sense. I know there's going to be a lot of people who probably disagree with me saying, you know, I'm done with them. But I've been grading cards since 2001. At no time have I ever been left in the dark, disrespected or anything by any of the companies out there until this. I even had a package once lost by Beckett many, many moons ago. And they paid me out within two weeks. And it was by check. They even overnighted it to me. They until from the time I, they started their claim, I had an email twice a week. I even had a follow up. Hey, did you get your package today? Stuff or did you get the check today? And every everything good? Okay. Hey, we're gonna give you X amount of free vouchers, stuff like that. They were it was phenomenal. I mean, I've had my disagreements with PSA out there, but in the long run, you know, they've always treated me fair, respectful with everything that's gone on, and I, I can't be mad at that. Because I could call somebody on a phone where SGC, no phone number. Unless there's one that mysteriously appears on their website uh, from the time I make this video. You can only email them. So it's a horrible communication process for one. Um, man, I'm just, I'm just really disappointed in the whole thing here. So I've been grading you guys know for a long time and th this is just and from an established company like SGC this is just pitiful. So starting off in this video this is my disclaimer. In no way am I telling everybody out there do not grade with SGC or I be littling them or anything like that. I'm just telling you guys what happened to me and why I will no longer do business with SGC. They will not get a dollar off me ever again. And honestly, I, if I'm asked about SGC, I will refer, you know, just say I will not, I don't grade with that company. I probably won't even talk about them in my videos anymore just because I'm just completely done. The trust, everything between the relationship of it is just done at this point. There's only so much I could take with a uh, lack of communication and being, you know, being treated like a customer out there that I could take. And I know some people will do group submissions and stuff like that with them. I'm telling you, just wait till they do this to you one day. It doesn't matter if I'm submitting 10,000 cards a year or if I'm submitting 100 cards a year or 10 cards a year. I should still be treated with respect and be informed of what's going on. I was not. And I'll get into this all right here. So before we get into the story, what you see on your screen here is an Instagram message that I sent to Mr. Peter Steinberg. Of SGC, you guys know him. He's always on all the videos. He's on all the little um, Twitter feeds, Instagram feeds. And I'll show you. That's him right there. He's very well known to company, and I mean, he's out everywhere. So posting his name's no big deal. I had to black out the customer service representative's name. And I uh, did black it out the order number, tracking number, and even though I, I don't know why I did my full name on here. So when we go through it, you guys see the black squiggly lines. That's what it is. Just measure back in the day whenever uh, Bill Crosby had a little squiggly pen going across the board and stuff like that. That's pretty much what I did here. So I've done this video now a couple times just because I kept catching something I had to um, take out. The card in question was one card that I mailed off to him. January 1st. It was $70 vintage card. It was already slabbed, okay? So it was chipped. It was an older slab. I just wanted it reholdered. Cost me $10 for that, plus $25 to ship it back. $25. And they were going to put it in a small flat rate to come back, which is like 9 bucks and $2 insurance. That's 11 I mean, the other $14, I guess, covers the little bit of bubble wrap and stuff they use. I, I have no idea. Uh, just a ridiculous charge there. But I guess that's just one of those flat rate things where when people... They use it for X amount of cards or whatever. But anyhow, getting back to this whole thing, I mailed it out. The card was graded around 10th. Well, I shouldn't say 10th. It was reholdered around the 10th. Um, on the 11th, I got tracking. You know, it goes out. Never shows up. I'm like, ah, probably delay one day. Still ain't here. 
On the 18th, which was a Wednesday, I reached out to email to a representative. I had his direct email that I've dealt with before. And we talked about it and everything. And basically, he told me that a case was going to be opened by one of his team members on the 18th. So when I thought about this, I'm like, a case. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't know at this time, are they, they have a private insurance or do they using the post office's insurance? Because if you're using the post office's insurance... I don't know how they're going to get that through showing it. they have a purchased value of that card. You need some type of receipt or something out there onto it to get that full value. Most companies out there, to include myself, have a personal insurance. Now, my personal insurance is not big like a lot of people's. It only covers X amount of cards, mostly all the ones in my safety deposit boxes. So if something would happen, fire, theft, shipping, whatever it may be, I can get reimbursed through them instead of having to go through uh, whatever insurance that carrier is doing, whether it's USPS, FedEx, or um, UPS. And the reason why I do it personally is because a lot of the cards I have in there, they don't sell a whole lot. And trying to find value and doing all this other crazy stuff, I led to that insurance company. That's what they do, collectibles, you know. But... You know, it's just one of those things. So I didn't know how they were doing it. Just said it. I, I found out what it was later, I should just say. So on January 23rd, the representative touched base with me and was informing me the case has been open once USPS did their due diligence. And this is how I knew then it was USPS. He would contact me. So that means they have to do the missing mail search. And then I thought it was 10 days after the last scam, but he tells me later in, in one of the emails that it's 15 days. Guys who work at the post office, you guys might know. Is it 10 or 15? I thought it was 10, but they might have changed since the last time I did my claims with the USPS. So on January 31st, the representative emailed me saying a claim was being filed, and SGC had to wait 15 days from the last scan to file the claim. I'm not too sure. I told him I wasn't too sure who the claim was through the USPS or private insurance that time frame because I was just completely lost onto it all. I waited and waited to hear back from January 31st. It all went through the whole month of February. I know I probably should have reached out every week, but why should I be the one reaching out? Shouldn't they be, uh, you know, saying, hey, man, we haven't heard anything back on this claim at least once a week? Maybe even once in February, the middle of it, then reach back out middle of March. We're still waiting. Nothing. Not one person reached out to me. Not one. That's the dis most disappointing thing there is. And I can tell you now, it doesn't even deal with sports cards. I'm going to go with the job I held between retiring and then coming back into my government job. And it dealt with uh, shipping and stuff like that. It was a big old uh, production facility, shipment, warehouse, whatever you want to call it. And I was one of the managers there. And I can tell you now, they had to track all the, you know, um, lost boxes, broken stuff, all that stuff. Big tracker on there. No joke. When was the last time you contacted the customer? If it was over a week, man, you were getting an earful. Why was they not getting an update within a week? But I'm guessing there's no policy like that at SGC, so probably why. So moving on, on March 2nd, I had to reach out to him for an update because I was like, come on now. It's been over a whole month. All February's passed. I haven't heard anything. Ridiculous. And again, I told him I'm not sure uh, company policy or not, but somebody should have updated me within that time frame to where I shouldn't have had to reach out, you know. But this is what gets me even more concerned. I told him the individual reached back to me on March 3rd and said he had to ask one of his team members for an update. Why does he not know what the status is? Okay, so that's March 3rd. That is on a Friday. Yes. A Friday. I had to think back in my time frame here because I'm looking at dates and knowing when this video is coming out. It was on a Friday. Monday passes. Tuesday passes. Wednesday passes. Ninth comes, which is Thursday. I had to reach back out. Ask if you, you know, hey, did you get an update from your team member? Why am I reaching out again? If you didn't get a response from that team member, why didn't you just sit there and dig and get with me? I was told the case has been escalated to management. This was at 1 p.m. on uh, Thursday. Wait all Thursday, nothing. I figured, yeah, they'll get to me Friday, right? Nothing. That's when I hit overtime and we talked about it. 
And as you can see, even that Thursday, I sent this message to Mr. Steinberg. Now, granted, he may not get the messages on Instagram and stuff like that there, but I was hoping it might work because before I have reached out on social media to Nat Turner, he's replied back anywhere from 20 minutes to five hours to me, but he still replied back. He took time out of his day. And so have many other people that are real big in the hobby and businesses that I work with. They've reached back out to me. Now, Grant, like I said, he might not check this. Maybe it went to his spam. I have no idea. But there's no other way I can get in touch with anybody unless I have that means. And I'm not going to sit there and waste hours on my day trying to dig up somebody's email, phone number, whatever it may be. It should be posted so we can use it. That's where it really irritates me the most right there. And just showing the lack of concern about my $70 card. Huh, it, it, it's no end. And I, I wrote more into this just so everybody knows. There's the rest of my conversation. And I told him it, there is a disconnect that is very disheartening to me. That I had to continue to ask for an update where there should be a company tracker or something that briefs, a brief on claims and report. To where any customer should feel confident they will be reached back to. You know, it's ridiculous. It can be a simple thing and we're still waiting on the process. What's that take? 30 seconds to type out and send? Out of your day? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not that important. Maybe your bulk group submitters are or whatever it is. Either way, you have to treat each customer the same. It don't matter if I'm submitting whatever amount in. That's where it really ticks me off the most. And, and, and they never said it. SGC never made that assumption. It was other people out there that I talked to about it. And they're like, oh, well, the, I go through group submitters. They always get an answer on this and that and everything else. Oh, okay. Well, if they're treating them with all this stuff, why can't I? Oh, because it was just a little piddly card. Well, I can tell you guys now, at the time of this video, I've gone on to PayPal and filed a charge back for my $35. I spent to reholder the card and for my shipping that I had to pay for. I bought the card. Lesson learned. Worst experience in my life. Horrible. Um, I'm just done with them completely. It, it wouldn't even matter if somebody from SGC called me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday after this video comes out. I would not change my opinion at all onto it. Because it's how you get treated as an individual person out there. That would makes my opinion, you know, and I'm fair to have my own opinion that I'm done with them. And just, you know, maybe my lesson out there is that if somebody else goes through the same thing, they'll, be, they'll just see, hey, dang, somebody, this happened to somebody else out there, too. And this is how it was the same way it was handled. I don't know, but I'm not telling people don't go grading with STC or nothing like that. I'm just done because their customer service was horrible. It was the worst I've seen from any company out there. I've even heard people having issues with GMA and them even getting back to them within a time, quick time frame than this. It's it just ridiculous. Ridiculous across the board. I did tell them, um, because I sent it an Instagram from Extreme Car Breaks, that he could look underneath the order number. I gave him my real name on there. My account actually has my phone number, name, and everything on to so He could reach out to me, email, versus that way. Nothing ever came. He never even read this, because I believe this here shows a little person once they read it or something like that. But I could scroll, pull it over to the left or right, I can't remember. It, it's unread. But, hey, I did everything I humanly could. I was more than patient with this company. And they just couldn't do it right, at all. So, you lost my business. And anybody else that was you know, pushing cards through me. They lost their business too because they're going to have to do it on their own or find somebody else because I will not send anything to this company ever again. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be surprised by this and be like, oh, it's a one thing in a lifetime. It could happen anywhere out there. I looked at this for a very long time frame before I even brought a lot of this to attention to a lot of people. And I've talked to other people that have reps in PSA, Beckett, um, I can't remember the other grading company now. They have a black label, uh, like a black looking label. I can't even think of it now. F Forensic something grading, and I forget the other company. And 
out of all them, they've never had issues at all. Because I figured, well, maybe, you know, here's some other horror stories out there. These other companies did this to them, that to them, everything like that. I'm talking about big bulk submitters, nothing. You know, they were surprised at this. And they're like, well, it is a little card. I'm like, well, it don't matter if it's little or big. I'm like, you run a business. If somebody loses your little card out there, aren't you, you know, going to make it right with the customer? Regardless, they could even make it right with me. I mean, it was 70 bucks to declared value. They could have just been like, hey, man, you know what? We're going to send you over to PayPal, 70 bucks, refund back, whatever. Cut me a check. Could have did anything. They didn't. They didn't. Why? And I'm not going to tell you, this is probably the reason why it got escalated to management, because they failed to get any money from the post office. I know for a fact, because I've had to file claims. Everybody recalls my videos onto that, if you've been around that long. And I won every one of them, because I listened to what the office out of Kansas, I think it was Kansas City, or St. Louis, one who... Um, Told me I had to do show proof of either the purchase or that I could evaluate a card with all my credentials and stuff. And I hit every one. Now, the one that I had to basically show the values the cards on to, they denied me twice and I had to go to a third party and I got 80%. So, I mean, if you know your thing and you talk to them, you know, onto the phone, you could get the answers. But I guarantee you they just said no, no, no. And that was it. Now they're like, I, I, what do we do? What do we do? Hey, I'm going to escalate this. So when you say escalate, that means it's a priority. And you had all day thir half a day Thursday and all day Friday, nothing. Nothing at all from them. Ah, oh, guys, yeah, this is pretty much it for the video because I know I'll just keep, I keep rambling on and on and on about this. But this will be my last um, video with anything with SGC and a title onto it as I am done with that company after the way that this happened um it, it just it just does not sit right with me at all they have no phone number to call there's no other way i mean i probably could have reached out to some people that have talked with mr steinberg and had them reach through but i shouldn't have to jump through all these hoops because there's a disconnect in your company i shouldn't have to do that and I understand probably why it wasn't high priority because of the value that it was in there, which shouldn't even be the issue to begin with. It was a customer to be taken care of and just wasn't taken care of. But all right, guys, I appreciate y'all listening to the story um, and hanging in there with me with it. But I figured I would share this all with you just so you could see what I've had to go through over a month and a half now with that grading company and they just won't receive any more cards for me to grade and anything any kind of uh you know reveals on this channel from that company just won't happen because i won't be sending cards in it's just that simple with me i mean been around for a long time it's easy to wash your hands of something you know and just move on other than that, guys, take care. Have a good rest of the week. I will catch you all next video. I'm out.